it first for maximum time to dry make sure it is a sunny day this is the drain plug you will need to pop out to drain the dirty water boo Clean, clean. Alrighty guys, so let's step through how to put your DB74W back together. First of all, it is very, very crucial to either caffeinate in the morning or grab yourself a beverage because this is going to be a bit of a process. Once everything's dry, it's much easier to give everything a clean out and vacuum all those little tight spaces that you might not be able to get to with a cloth. And then those little plugs that I talked about earlier, just go in here and in on the other side as well. Now this might take a little bit of fiddling around but you will get there in the end you just kind of see where the carpet goes and it's sort of molded already for where it needs to sit I just like to make sure both footwells are properly put in with the carpeting Once it's all in place, it should line up with all the corresponding holes for all your screw bits and all your little clips. The next thing we want to make sure we've got from underneath the carpet is the two plugs for our airbags. So that's the white and yellow tag there. These plugs won't be in everyone's zooks. I do have rear locker and a front locker wired. And this is what the carpeting should look like with all your little tags out. So make sure you grab a King Chrome removal tool or like I'm using here, just a flat head screwdriver just to lift up that trim and put the carpeting where it needs to go. It all lines up so it should make pretty clear sense. If not, hit me up in the DMs and I'm happy to talk you through it. Luckily for us, the chimneys are pretty easy to put back together it's all pretty clear cut 
where everything needs to sit and here's the other side of placing the carpeting underneath the rear trim and here we've just got the plug for the internal lighting if you do have that fitted to your chimney that needs to be plugged in first once you've got it all attached you should be able to find where the trim sits and it should align with this little hole to the bolt and place the trim where it needs to sit. This piece of trim goes along the door seal. It's very easy to remove. You just give it a good tug or lift up with the trim removal tool and it just slips on in here and you just have to give it a good tap to put it back into its recess holes. So once you've got everything all lined up, it's pretty straightforward. Put it all in place, slap it all in. It should sit into its little recess holes nicely. And next thing is you're just gonna put in your little plastic screws back into the little holes to hold the trim in place. Biggest thing to remember with these little screws when you're pulling them out is just put them into place where you know you can find them when you put it back together. And it's pretty easy to remove them, just use a flathead screwdriver or like you see here, I'm just screwing it up with my finger. They're not in too tight. The next part is the little footrest. These are just push-in screws, they're not too difficult to work out, but you just want to place it in the recess holes where it sits and push it in. So because I'm working backwards, I'm gonna then show you how to remove this little footrest here. So all you need is a trim removal tool or a flathead screwdriver like this, and they should just pop out like that. Pretty easy. Another key component to replacing your trim in its recess is just aligning all the little tabs with their corresponding holes like I'm doing here. These next bolts are just M5 bolts from Bunnings with the eyes and I just screw them into place of the little plastic screws so that I can have secure tight end points for mounting my fridge in the back. So like I said, I've got um, rear locker fitted and a front locker wired up. So these are just the little attachments. And here's me realizing I forgot which one was already pre-fitted, as in the rear locker. Um, I worked it out eventually, but yeah. You won't necessarily have these, but if you have rear lockers or little buttons in there, you should have wires to re-plug in. And this piece just sits over the top of the handbrake and into its recess. Next thing is gonna be a little push-in screws. So they simply just go in like this and you just press them in and they clip in. To take them out, it's as simple as using a flathead screwdriver to pop them out. And here's me just making sure all the carpeting aligns with its corresponding spots for the gear shifter trim to go over the top so same thing with the little push in screws uh, just mount your trim and then grab your screws and they simply just push in and they should make an audible click once they're established and they should be flush Same again for the other side, two little screws here and here. Now that the trim is all in place, we're going to replace the carpet in the back. So like I said, the carpet's all got pre-designated holes, so it should be pretty easy to work out where it all sits. And this is just where the little mounts need to go to secure the bench seat in place. Once you have secured it, I'm just quickly going to show you how you lift it back up. So it is a bit of a yank that you're gonna have to give it, but I promise you're not gonna break anything. I was real scared to do it when I first tried to. Alrighty, so now I'm mounting the seats back in. Easiest way is to pick it up like this and have it fully forward so you can get it into the car. A bit of maneuvering around to secure it in its designated spot, but it should sit nicely and flush. 
And there are my screws in my little Hunger Jacks cup. I thought I was real smart keeping it all together. Pop your screws back in place. It's important to do this prior to the next step because you don't want to set off your airbag. So make sure you mount your seats in the first place. Make sure they're nice and tight. They are a safety item after all. Alright, once you've secured both seats in place, you want to jump underneath the seat and you should have a yellow and a white tab for your airbags. They're a simple push-in clip and then in the next video I'll show you how to pull them out. So the yellow clip you simply need to pull down on here and give it a good tug. And the white clip is just a push-in from the other side, you should see where my pointer finger is point point and squeeze and pull down. All right guys, so now you've put your Zook back together, you can put all your gear back in. So here's me just, I've restocked and cleaned all of my gear bags here and I'm just putting everything away nice and neatly. So next time I want to use it, it's all set up and ready to go. Another key point to remember if you are off-roading and you're using recovery gear is to keep it clean. So my kinetic rope got very muddy and the first thing I did um, after I cleaned my carpets was wash my kinetic rope as well. So remember to look after the gear that you purchase so it lasts you a lot longer. And here I'm just mounting back up my Nomad PDU dual battery setup. Alrighty guys, that uh, is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoy. I didn't really want to step through the whole disassembling part. I thought once it's all clean, I can go through reassembling and you guys can just work backwards if you ever want to take apart your car. But I hope you enjoyed. Uh, it's a lot less pressure now knowing that you can put your car back together in one piece. Thanks guys.